Seth Bullock was born on July 23, 1849. Seth Bullock was born in Amherstburg, Ontario, Canada, and later moved to Montana with his family. In his early years, he worked as a rancher and a sheriff's deputy in various Montana towns. In 1876, Seth Bullock arrived in the gold mining camp of Deadwood, South Dakota, which was known for its lawlessness. Recognizing the need for order, he was soon appointed as the town's first sheriff. Bullock played a pivotal role in bringing law and order to Deadwood, which was a raucous and dangerous place during the gold rush. He implemented strict law enforcement policies and helped establish a sense of order in the community. Aside from his law enforcement duties, Seth Bullock was involved in various business ventures. He opened a hardware store, a hotel, and a restaurant in Deadwood. The Bullock Hotel, which he built in 1894, still stands today as a historic landmark. Seth Bullock developed a close friendship with future President Theodore Roosevelt. When Roosevelt visited the Dakota Territory for a buffalo hunt, he stayed at the Bullock Hotel in Deadwood. The two men shared a love of the outdoors and the West, and their friendship lasted for many years. Seth's early years were marked by hard work on his family's ranch, and he quickly developed a reputation for his strong work ethic and unwavering sense of justice. As he entered adulthood, he found his calling as a lawman, serving as a deputy sheriff in various Montana towns. It was clear that Seth had a knack for keeping the peace in rough and tumble communities. In 1876, as news of the Black Hills Gold Rush spread like wildfire, Seth Bullock decided to seek his fortune in the bustling mining camp of Deadwood, South Dakota. Little did he know that this decision would change the course of his life and make him a legend of the Wild West. Deadwood was a lawless and chaotic place, a haven for gamblers, prospectors, and outlaws. Shootouts and violence were commonplace, and the town cried out for a strong hand to bring order. That hand belonged to Seth Bullock. He was appointed as Deadwood's first sheriff and immediately set about restoring law and order to the unruly town. Bullock implemented strict law enforcement policies, cracked down on gambling and vice, and earned the respect of both law-abiding citizens and roughnecks alike. His no-nonsense approach to justice was evident in his famous motto, Be square with me, and I'll be square with you. One of the most significant moments in Seth Bullock's career occurred in 1889, when President Benjamin Harrison appointed him as the U.S. Marshal for the District of South Dakota. In this role, Bullock's jurisdiction expanded beyond Deadwood, and he continued to pursue justice throughout the region. But Seth Bullock was not just a lawman. He was a man of diverse talents and interests. He opened a hardware store in Deadwood and later built the iconic Bullock Hotel, which became a hub for travelers and dignitaries passing through the Black Hills. It was during this time that Bullock struck up an enduring friendship with a rising political star named Theodore Roosevelt. Roosevelt, an avid outdoorsman, was drawn to the rugged beauty of the Dakota Territory. When he embarked on a buffalo hunt in the region, he chose to stay at the Bullock Hotel. The two men bonded over their shared love for the West, conservation, and the values of integrity and fairness. The legacy of Seth Bullock extends far beyond the pages of history. Even today, the name Bullock is synonymous with the American West, and the story of his life continues to captivate and inspire. Seth's dedication to law and order in Deadwood left an indelible mark on the town. Under his leadership, Deadwood transformed from a lawless frontier outpost into a thriving, civilized community. His sheriff's office, located in the heart of town, became a symbol of justice, and his presence on the streets instilled a sense of security among the residents. The Bullock Hotel, an architectural gem he constructed in 1894, stands as a testament to his enduring impact. The hotel, with its Victorian elegance, is not only a historical landmark, but also a reminder of Seth's entrepreneurial spirit. It continues to welcome guests from around the world, offering a glimpse into the past and a taste of the Wild West's charm. Seth's friendship with Theodore Roosevelt, which blossomed during Roosevelt's stay at the Bullock Hotel, is a testament to the enduring bonds that can form on the frontier. The two men, both larger-than-life characters in their own right, shared a deep love for nature and conservation. Seth's influence undoubtedly played a role in shaping Roosevelt's conservation policies as President of the United States. Seth Bullock's life was not without its share of challenges and dangers. He faced numerous threats from outlaws and desperados who sought to challenge his authority. Shootouts and confrontations were a part of his daily life, but his unwavering commitment to justice and his quick wit often prevailed. Deadwood, 
South Dakota is a town steeped in the history and lore of the American Wild West. It was founded in 1876 during the Black Hills Gold Rush, which brought prospectors, miners, and fortune seekers from all over to the area. The town quickly gained a reputation as a rough and lawless place, with a booming population of people drawn by the promise of gold. Deadwood's early days were marked by lawlessness, violence, and a general disregard for authority. It was a place where gambling, prostitution, and saloons thrived, and where disputes were often settled with gunfire in the streets. The town attracted a host of famous and infamous figures from the era, including Wild Bill Hickok, Calamity Jane, and, of course, Seth Bullock. It was also a haven for notorious outlaws like Jack McCall and Al Swearingen. The discovery of gold in the Black Hills brought a flood of prospectors and miners, leading to a rapid increase in the town's population. This influx of people and wealth fueled Deadwood's growth and reputation. Deadwood desperately needed law and order, which is where Seth Bullock came into the picture. The lack of effective law enforcement contributed to the town's chaos with frequent conflicts and shootings. Seth Bullock arrived in Deadwood in 1876, the same year it was founded, as part of the wave of fortune seekers drawn by the gold rush. However, Seth had a different mission than most. He was determined to bring law and order to this lawless frontier town. Seth Bullock was soon appointed as Deadwood's first sheriff, a position that came with immense challenges. He quickly realized the gravity of the task at hand as he faced a town rife with gambling, violence, and outlaw activity. Bullock's approach to law enforcement was firm and unyielding. He cracked down on gambling and vice, imposed strict regulations on firearms, and made it clear that there was a new sheriff in town. His motto, be square with me, and I'll be square with you, exemplified his approach to justice. Seth Bullock earned both the respect and fear of Deadwood's residents. He was respected for his dedication to restoring order, and he was feared by those who sought to disrupt it. Shootouts and confrontations were not uncommon, but Bullock's commitment to upholding the law was unwavering. During his time in Deadwood, Bullock built not only a reputation as a lawman, but also a lasting friendship with Theodore Roosevelt. Roosevelt, who would later become President of the United States, stayed at the Bullock Hotel during a buffalo hunting expedition, and the two men bonded over their shared love for the West, conservation, and the values of integrity and fairness. Seth Bullock's tenure as Deadwood Sheriff was a defining chapter in the town's history. He played a crucial role in bringing law and order to a lawless frontier. In its early days, the town of Deadwood prided itself on being lawless, killing anyone who dared to show civility. After the death of Wild Bill Hickok and the acquittal of his killer, Jack McCall, it was clear that Deadwood needed law and order. Seth Bullock, a Deadwood businessman, answered the call to become the town's first police chief. According to local legend, Bullock's tall figure, broad shoulders, and steel-gray eyes were so intimidating that he could stare down an angry cobra. His bravery helped Bullock conquer the wildest town in the West without killing anyone. Ironically, Bullock arrived at the gold camp two days after Hickok's death. Bullock and his business partner, Soulstar, owned and operated the town's first hardware store. But when it burned in 1894, they decided not to rebuild, but to build Deadwood's first hotel. The Bullock Hotel, spread over three floors and 64 rooms, was the most luxurious hotel of its time, with steam heating and indoor bathrooms on each floor. Little is known about his childhood, except that he was often at odds with his father's strict discipline. Undoubtedly, his father's military attitude toward politics, discipline, and other views eventually led to the development of Seth's personal code of honor. At age 16, Seth ran away from home and went to Montana, where his sister lived. However, she quickly sent him back to his parents. Not discouraged for long, at the age of 18, Seth left home forever. When he was 20 years old, he returned to Montana and arrived in Helena in 1867. Following in his father's political footsteps, he ran for the Territorial Legislative Council but was defeated. However, he managed to get elected as a member of the Territorial Senate, where he served for two years, from 1871 to 1872. During this time, Bullock was instrumental in establishing the first national park of the United States Yellowstone. After serving in the Montana Territorial Senate, Bullock was elected Sheriff of Lewis and Clark County in 1873. Quickly making his presence felt, he acted not only as a lawyer, but also as an auctioneer and contractor, embarked on the hardware business with Soulstar. In 1874, Bullock married his childhood friend, 
Martha Eccles, in Salt Lake City, Utah. But when Material Partners saw a better opportunity in Deadwood, South Dakota, he brought his wife and newborn child to the safety of his family home in Michigan. Arriving in Deadwood on August 1, 1876, in wagons filled with hardware, including hose, stoves, shovels, dynamite, cooking utensils, etc., Seth and Soul immediately loaded their belongings. A tent. After that, this entrepreneurial couple bought land and built a fake facade to serve as a place of business, advertising furniture, wallpaper, lights, and equipment. By the time they arrived, Deadwood had gained a reputation as a hellish camp filled with miners, transients, gamblers, outlaws, and prostitutes. The day after their arrival, Wild Bill Hickok was shot and killed by the cowardly Jack McCall. Outraged, the camp began demanding policy in the ungoverned territory. Although Bullock is often said to be the first marshal of Deadwood, this is incorrect. The camp's first marshal was a man named Isaac Brown, who was elected by the juvenile court after Jack McCall's trial on August 5, 1876. However, when Isaac Brown, Reverend Smith, and two other men named Charles Mason and Charles Holland were traveling between Crook City and Deadwood and were ambushed and killed on August 20, leaving a position open, the juvenile court soon reconvened, this time electing Con Stapleton. In March, 1877, Governor Pennington appointed Seth Bullock as the first sheriff of the new Lawrence County. He was also sheriff of the provisional government in the area now known as South Dakota. Undeterred by the lawlessness and dangerous nature of the district, Bullock wasted no time and appointed several brave deputies to help him clean up the city. In just a short time, order was restored in the former hell camp. Bullock never killed a man while serving as Lawrence County Sheriff. According to his grandson, he could outwit a mad cobra or a rampaging elephant, which was often enough to convince unruly elements to settle down before any violence occurred. Go out. When Deadwood became more stable, Bullock brought his family. Seth's wife, Martha, quickly became a pillar of the community. Since Seth had more time on his hands, he spent most of it raising and raising horses on land he and Soul purchased at the divergence of the Belforce River and Redwater Creek. Bullock also became interested in mining and politics while continuing to serve as Deputy United States Marshal. In the late 1880s, Bullock persuaded the Fremont, Elkhorn, and Missouri Valley Railroad to build throughout the ranch for free. Located three miles northwest of the town of Minicella, the railroad arrived in 1890 and Seth founded the town of Belforsh. Bullock and Starr offered free lots for any buildings moved from Minicella town, and soon the new settlement quickly took over the county seat. Bell Forsh later became the largest cattle shipping point in the United States. In the late 1880s, Bullock persuaded the Fremont, Elkhorn, and Missouri Valley Railroad to build throughout the ranch for free. Located three miles northwest of the town of Minicella, the railroad arrived in 1890 and Seth founded the town of Bell Forsh. Bullock and Starr offered free lots for any buildings moved from Minicella town, and soon the new settlement quickly took over the county seat. Bell Forsh later became the largest cattle shipping point in the United States. In 1894, the Deadwood hardware store was affected by a fire and Bullock decided to build Deadwood's first hotel over the original store and warehouse. Priced at $40,000, this three-story, 64-room hotel has steam heating and bathrooms on each floor. Completed in 1896, the Bullock Hotel quickly became the most sought-after luxury hotel of its time. This historic hotel still exists today and continues to offer accommodations and a 24-hour casino. When the Spanish-American War broke out in 1898, Bullock volunteered to become one of Roosevelt's Rough Riders and was appointed captain of Troop A of the Grigsby Cowboy Regiment. However, the team never saw any combat as they witnessed the brief war at a training camp in Louisiana. After his short time in combat, Bullock later became known as captain. When Theodore Roosevelt was elected president, Bullock organized a group of 50 cowboys, including Tom Mix, to march in the presidential inauguration parade in 1905. Later that year, Roosevelt appointed Seth Bullock as United States Marshal in South Dakota, a position he held for the next nine years. Roosevelt's death in January 1919 was a terrible blow to Bullock. Before long, he enlisted the help of the Black Hills Pioneer Association and erected a monument to the deceased president. Inaugurated on July 4, 1919, it was the first presidential monument erected in the country.
In 1884, while bringing horse thief Crazy Steve to Deadwood for trial, Bullock met Theodore Roosevelt for the first time. Roosevelt was then a deputy sheriff of Medora, North Dakota, and the two shared coffee and parked themselves on the back door of a wagon in a pasture near Belle Forge. The pair quickly struck up a friendship that lasted throughout Bullock's life. Roosevelt tells a less colorful story to his son Kermit. After returning to public life in the East, Roosevelt was appointed to the United States Civil Service Commission. He returned to North Dakota and the Badlands to enter the commission business in 1892. His next stop was the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. Roosevelt chose to combine business with pleasure, his concept of pleasure anyway, and took this leg of the journey on horseback, passing through Deadwood, taking him past Seth Bullock's house. As Roosevelt and his companions crossed the Belforce River, they encountered a wary Bullock, Wolf writes. As Roosevelt admitted, his party seemed lost, like a bunch of tin horn players. After they introduced each other, Bullock became much more intimate, and this simple meeting began a lifelong friendship between Roosevelt and Bullock. According to Kermit, there is more than friendship on Bullock's part. Seth Bullock was a hero worshiper, and his father was his great hero, he recalls. Theodore Roosevelt was one of the loudest voices calling for war with Spain over Cuba, and when that happened in 1898, he rushed to volunteer. Bullock quickly followed suit. Melvin Grigsby, Attorney General of South Dakota, was promoted to colonel and commanded the 3 RD Cavalry Regiment, serving in Cuba. Grigsby recruited Bullock to command Troop AI, and Bullock in turn recruited 84 volunteers, mostly miners and cowboys. They left the hills in high spirits, confident that they would overcome the Spaniards in short order, and that wherever their train stopped on its journey east, everyone was dancing, bands playing, and food appearing, Wolf wrote. It's all nothing. Roosevelt and his Rough Riders achieved lasting fame in Cuba. For their part, Team A was still training in Georgia when the war ended. Bullock and his men were deeply disappointed by this turn of events, but his service made him known across the country as a frontiersman, a pragmatic pioneer, Wolf writes. It also strengthened his relationship with Roosevelt. When Roosevelt was nominated for vice president alongside William McKinley in 19, largely on the basis of his wartime reputation, he asked Bullock to accompany him on his campaign through the Dakotas and Montana. Roosevelt hated the ceremonial vice presidency, but fate soon relieved him of this burden. An assassin's bullet felled William McKinley in 1901, and Theodore Roosevelt ascended to the bully pulpit as he described the presidency. He loved the job so much that he ran it himself in 1904, and when he won, Seth Bullock had a brilliant idea. Gather a group of real Western cowboys, head to the nation's capital, and join your good friend Teddy's inauguration parade. Bullock's brigade, as they became known, were neither novel heroes nor scene stealers, Bullock wrote in a diary of their journey. They are cowboys, and they are real people, and the reason they come to Washington is because this is the first inauguration of someone who knows them. Harding County ranchers, Fred and Charlie Wilson, were among the 60 men invited by Bullock to join this great adventure. They also brought some people along along the way, said Fred's nephew, Fred Wilson of Belle Forge. One of them was Tom Mix, before he became famous as a film director. He started talking to them during their stop in Chicago, and he decided to join them. Mix also volunteered to serve in the Spanish-American War and, like Bullock, had never been abroad before the guns were silenced. Fred Wilson, the eldest brother, wrote a fascinating account of a trip to Washington in the 1950s. Curtis H. Satzinger, longtime printer of the Bell Forge Daily Post and Weekly Bee, kept a copy that his daughter, he, Rita Satzinger Edwards, found while away. Through his papers, after Curtis's death, there was a large crowd that came to see us off from Deadwood, Wilson wrote. A delegation of cowboys from Wyoming joined the group at Edgemont, and to say they were a lively bunch would be an understatement. Some of their companions, especially the group of Oriental ladies, hesitated to ride the dining car in the presence of the crude cowboys, but they were soon captivated by their Western banjo and guitar music. Bullock and his comrades toured the city when they stopped in Chicago, and a noisy crowd greeted them when they arrived in Washington on March 2. Their horses had been shipped in advance, and the boys were the cowboys were disappointed to discover that their animals were in rather rough condition after the long trip east. There was nothing we could do, so they got in the car and went to the Washington Monument to get some exercise and have some fun in a very cruel way. Remember to hit that subscribe button and like the video if you're loving the content. Your support means the world to us.